Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for September 12th, 2023. Well, holy moly, we're almost halfway through the month, and it is just a choppy, uncertain mess in the market. Um, if we take a look what we've got going on here in the diamonds, um, we just continue to wind up this wedge. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Tuesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again everyone and thanks so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can figure out how we might want to approach the market for today. First off, as you can see here, we've got a situation in this market where we're running into overhead resistance. We've got upside trend. Um, we did break above this support area in the chart. And now this morning, we are looking at a potential gap down open here. I'm recording this pretty early. It's, it's only 5.30 a.m. here um, in central Nebraska, so 6.30 a.m. on the East Coast. But as you can see, um, looking at a little bit of a pullback here uh, from yesterday's close, a lot of uncertainty in the price action yesterday. As I suggested, there may be a lot of choppiness, and that's just simply due to the fact that our market is so uncertain about what comes next with that CPI report. But if the bulls can find inspiration today, where could they go? Well, I would suggest that the bulls can really start pushing. Then we might see that opportunity that we push up there and we test yesterday's high first, and maybe this uh, down uh, downtrend line in the chart. If they're able to push through there, well then of course I think there's that chance we come up into this area that I have marked on the chart. If the bears find that inspiration today and pushing it, and they got a little inspiration here already this morning pushing down, I would say the first test of support is gonna be right here where I had this line drawn. If they were to break that, then we're going to be testing this upside trend and then possibly even down into here if they really were to become engaged. So keep an eye on that. Remember that tomorrow morning we have that CPI number and that could make the decision for us whether or not we're popping through the upside here or breaking through the downside. If we take a look at our technicals, You'll notice that yesterday we tested that 50 day moving average, tried to pop it, backed away from it, and you can see now kind of pushing down here in the pre market, gapping away from it just a little bit. Now that may change by the open, but keep a close eye on that. That's usually not a good sign, a failure at the 50 day. Let's uh, take a look at our SPY, SPY. Also, um, pushed up here kind of in the middle of this channel, but you can see we had a better day in here. Big Tech did it did its job yesterday holding up, and there wasn't much of anything else really holding up in there, but the tech giants were doing a pretty good job, particularly Tesla. Tesla almost on its own accounts for the majority of that move in here yesterday. If you take a look um, right now, we've got a little bit of bearishness coming in here in the pre-market. Market. Again, it's really early, but you'll want to watch that carefully just in case we were to slip. If the bulls, however, find inspiration, let's look for this resistance area that I've got marked in here to be tested. See whether or not we can poke through that area. And if we can, then I'm going to suggest we might come up here a little bit higher, test this downtrend line in the SPY to see if we can break on through uh, to the upside. If the bears were to find inspiration, well, I think maybe the first test would be yesterday's lows down in here. See if we can push back through that level. And if they do that, I'm going to suggest we test this trend line in here to see if that'll hold. If that were to fail, then I think we're back down 
in this level of the chart, testing that low. Now, um, if we take a look at our technicals on this one, you can see here the SPY did break through its 50 days, so that is a good sign. But we do have to remember it did it on very low volume and it did it with very few stocks, um, really making that possible. So we still have that possibility in here. You can see that we could make that next lower high. It may not be there, it may be a little bit higher, but that possibility does still exist. And we do have to look um, at what the chart is telling us, not what we want the chart to be. If we take a look at QQQ, QQQ doing kind of the same thing in here, stuck in these ranges here in the chart, as you can see, almost center of that channel. We're trying to figure out um, what comes next. But I will say, that the QQQ is stronger. And the reason I'll say that is first off, you'll notice this first line of downtrend. This was the first downtrend um, real break here in the chart and we are holding above that. So you've got to give that to the bulls and the fact that we pushed above this area here in the chart and you also have to give that one up to the bulls. Now, if the um, bulls continue to push today, you can see we've got a little bit of pushback maybe coming in here um, early in the pre-market again that could change because i'm recording this so early but you can see that possibility if we were to push a little bit higher let's see if we can break yesterday's high first and if we can pop through there then maybe we're up in here looking at this downtrend that i've drawn in here that's that next level up to see if we can re-challenge this high in the chart and if the bears were to find inspiration well that push back down maybe to test this trend in that trend break um, area of the chart, uh, the low of yesterday. And if that were to fail, then you can notice how we could drop on through here, testing this major level of price support in the chart, and then drop on through that. And you can see where that next level is here. Let's take a look at our um, technicals on this. As you can see, broke above that 50 day moving average. So this one, again, I have to say is, by far the strongest of the indexes um, holding in here, holding above that 50 day moving average. But we still unfortunately have this situation going on where we could find that resistance and fail. So uh, once again, we have to remember to look at all aspects of the, of the chart. And if we're going to be making good business decisions in our trading, then we need to be willing to look at the chart for what it is, not for what we want it to be. And remember that there are all kinds of possible outcomes in the market. For example, we often forget, we think about, well, the market going up and we think about the market going down. But if you'll notice in here, um, the majority of the time, um, majority of price action in the market is when the market is really drifting along sideways. So that is a possibility as well. And we do have to keep that in mind. Let's take a look at our IWM. Now, IWM suffered a little bit yesterday. It popped up and then ended up pulling back, leaving kind of a dark cloud cover pattern here in that chart. And you see we're catching a little bit of gap down. Now, this purple line that I've got down in here, if the bears were to continue to push, I think there's a pretty good chance we get this close to a, a major moving average. and and it just sucks it in. It's like an electromagnet gets engaged and it pulls it into that level. So I think there is a pretty good chance the 200 day moving average will get tested here once again in IWM. The question is, will it hold the support as it did over here with these two candles? or will we push on lower? And that's one of the things we don't wanna see. If we start to see our small caps breaking to a new low, that really could lead us on down. You do wanna remember in here that the last time we tested the 50 day moving average here, we popped up there and then that was a complete rejection in that um, on IWM. So wouldn't be all that much of a surprise after a failure of the 50 to see a, um, a failure of the 200 as well. So we have to we have to keep that in mind. Now on the bullish side, if we can hold that level, if we push down in here and hold and bounce off of there, well, that gives us that opportunity that we could triple test that and maybe we do take off to the upside from there 
I still think that's a pretty big question, but the possibility does exist. So and once again, if those bears find inspiration, look for that test of the 50 day moving average. And if that doesn't hold, then maybe we test these candle tails down in here that's below that. One of the things we don't want to see is that market making a brand new low. And you could see there is a little bit of price support over here in, where we could make that brand new low and that would kind of confirm the downtrend. If the bulls were to find inspiration, well, the first thing I would be doing is I'd be looking for that break of yesterday's high. If they can break through there, awesome. Then we may have that opportunity. And you can see this is a an area right there of price resistance. Um, if we can break through um, that area, then maybe we can progress right back on up here and we can test this major resistance level and downtrend once again in the chart. Let's take a look at our VIX. VIX yesterday popped up for just a little bit and then pulled right back um, with the QQQ rallying. Um, it is interesting to me that the VIX is showing us um, so little fear, even though we know that traders are sitting on the sidelines trying to wait for that CPI number, just not knowing exactly what to do, except in big tech. In big tech, it seems like it's okay to buy um, everything all the time and keep pushing those PE ratios higher and higher and higher, but and no one seems to care about that. But watching this carefully in here, you can see we're in this range, around 13 handles here in the chart. If the bulls were to continue to find inspiration here, then I would suggest we pull back down here and we see if we can test that support and maybe even break that down. If the bears find inspiration here today, then I would look for that push up here. See if we can test this resistance level in the chart. And if they can really push, maybe we break on through up there. Remember, it's higher lows that cause a problem here on the bearish side. If we were to pop up here, hold a little bit of a higher low, then that does start to raise some concern uh, for the market. If we take a look at our T2122, now T2122 at one point in time yesterday when the Dow was up 200 points, T2122 was all the way up here. Uh, but we gave that up pretty quickly um, yesterday in the market pulling back. And as you can see here, um, if the bulls were to find inspiration today, then there's no reason to believe that we couldn't be right back up here. There was plenty of room to move up here. And even beyond that, if we can find some really good inspiration uh, to push on the bullish side, one of the things we do have to realize um, also though, is because we did stretch this just a little bit higher yesterday, we opened up a little bit more opportunity to the downside if the bears were to find inspiration. So keep that in mind. Remember T2122 doesn't tell us direction. It just tells us when we're in those overbought, oversold areas. So don't use this as an idea that tells you which way the market is going to go. When we take a look at our T20, T2108 really didn't improve that much yesterday. It picked up just a little bit. And the good news on that is we held this little price support area here in the chart. But boy, it really wasn't impressed. And this is that clue that there were just select few stocks that moved yesterday because of all the stocks out there, um, we only had a little tiny increase in T2108, 31 and a half percent of the stocks above their 40 day moving average. You'll notice we still have considerable resistance area above if the bulls can be inspired. What we really don't wanna see if you are a bull is you don't wanna see this reverse today with that bearishness we see in the pre-market pushing us back down in here because then we run that risk that we could push down into these levels of the chart. So just watch that closely. And our T2107, unfortunately, um, isn't doing us um, any favors either. Yesterday, it was just absolutely unimpressed pretty much went sideways, not much happening in here. You can still see, and it's it's very clear and very evident 
um, whether this will play out or not I have no idea but you can see the head and shoulders pattern in that chart this would be the neckline of it and um, we'll just want to watch that pretty closely now on that neckline we want to note that that's a pretty good level of price support and if the bulls can find inspiration then maybe pushing back up into this upper area of resistance um, certainly is possible if the bears were to find inspiration here and break the neckline then i'm suggesting we could come pretty deep down in here um, into um, uh, around the 30 mid 30 area of the chart so watch that closely here about 45 percent we're 44.68 here about 45 percent of the stocks holding above the 200 day but obviously what we're seeing in that little bit of bearishness this morning could change that a bit let's take a look at our t2101 t2101 market breadth continues to be soft and we see that in the volume we see that in this uncertainty of the market um, you know and there's just so many uncertainties that are creating this first cpi um, on wednesday is creating this we know we have issues with our bond yields our bond yields continuing to stay up there this morning uh two-year bond yields holding in there at 4.99 percent um we're, we're not making much improvement in that. We have the worry um, out here of our major banks and the, uh, the issues that they're dealing with here in the market. We have our worry of what the Fed is going to be doing. We have geopolitical worries. We're worried about what's going on in China right now and their economic decline. We're worried about what's going on in Europe and their economic decline. And then if you add in some of the political items out there that are kicking up so for example um, Congress uh, uh, comes back into session today and they have about 11 days to pass some kind of of continuing resolution that will keep the government open otherwise the government could go into shutdown on the 30th and there are some serious issues and concerns out there that that may occur this time so watch that closely and then um, we also have um, the issues of a possible UAW strike coming up midweek and today today we could get a little bit of uh, wild volatility in the market because I believe today is the day that we are going to see the Apple product release um, sometime this afternoon or usually around midday they do their Apple product release um, sometimes that affects bullishly sometimes it affects bearishly on Apple watch that closely today now you can see Apple yesterday rallied back after gapping down rallied back to this price resistance um, maybe it might be just how it comes off in this product release, whether or not we break back through that level or if we fail at that level. So watch that close. Let's take a look at some stocks that, uh, oh, uh, we better take a look at our um, economic calendar here for today. Uh, not that there's much on here to look at. Um, we've got an NFIB small business optimism report to be thinking about, and we've got some bond um, announcements and auctions, the 10 year auction here to be paid attention to. That's about it. Um, everything's going to be waiting on that CPI. And when it comes to the earnings calendar, earnings calendar, there is literally nothing of note worthiness on the earnings calendar today. And we were talking about stocks like this are reporting today. And there's um, oh, eight or ten of those that um, are reporting today, but virtually nothing in here. I would say probably the most... Um, um, good looking chart in here would be um, a mama and mama had a good pop yesterday to the upside but honestly the, on on that big day it traded less than a million shares and most of the time it trades far less than that so not much happening here on the earnings calendar and um, only a four dollar stock so i wouldn't worry too much about that that being said, how about we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. And remember, guys, these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security. Make sure you do your own due diligence. Make sure you're very, very careful about how you approach the market today. Because of that CPI number tomorrow, you buy either long side trades or short side trades. 
That CPI could reverse everything in about half a heartbeat tomorrow morning, and then you're sitting there uh, waiting for the market to open, looking at some um, possible pain here in your charts. Now, let's take a look at a few of these charts that I think are looking pretty good. Take a look at Roku. Now, Roku had a good pop the other day. Um, Roku made a decision that they're cutting 10% of their workforce. They're consolidating some of their office space, and Roku really popped here to the upside on that news. Notice that um, we pulled back and we're finishing this consolidation out here toward the trend. I've placed a price alert here on the chart watching that and just to see if that's going to pop on through there and it may provide that next opportunity to the upside. Keep an eye on Roku. I think it's a really good idea to be keeping an eye on Rivian as well. Rivian holding in this nice consolidating pattern. Now uh, clearly we still have this resistance level up here to, that's not very straight but you get my point, that resistance level up here to worry about if it does pop but watch that carefully in here. If this holds that higher low, we might be able to find that opportunity to move on up there in Rivian. Watch that closely. Take a look at Telray. Telray went ahead and moved on up yesterday. I did um, end up, I have a little bias on this to let you know. I did uh, take a little nibble into this the other day. Didn't want to buy a whole lot because my idea on this is the longer term. If you take a look at this on the weekly, um, you can see this big trend break to the downside and we held the higher low in here. Moving up in this upside trend and I'm looking for this to maybe take, it, it could take the next year and a half moving back up into um, this area of the chart but um, I'm willing to wait on that and as it moves up and makes new lows and higher lows I'll be looking to add to the trade. This is a big change here for Tilray with their purchase of um, several of the Anheuser-Busch brands so watch that closely. Boy I'll tell you on the um, uranium side of things um, we are strong 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 and even with the strong dollar really pushing up here on uranium. Take a look at URA, breaking through major levels of price resistance in the chart and then just continuing to rip to the upside. Um, that commodity is looking very, very strong. We're gonna have some resistance areas coming into play over here, so keep an eye on that. We might need a rest or a pullback to find an entry, but if you take a look at UUUU, also very, very strong in this upside move here in the chart, just running in here um, looking good we are approaching these big levels of price resistance I would keep a close eye on UUU because if this were to break out of that area of the chart and then hold boy there may be some big upside yet coming um, if it can uh, handle that resistance and then of course CCJ which really is the favored um, for me um, this is just really strong. We've got good volume in here, good strength in this chart. Nice move yesterday, putting in a little bit of a bullish engulfing, trying to continue along this trend. I would keep watching uh, CCJ for those next opportunities to the upside. Let's take a look at some of what happened in the energy sector yesterday. Boy, all of a sudden, we had some big bearish candles coming in on those charts, and we need some rest in some of these. So I wouldn't get wigged out about the bearish engulfings or anything like that unless they start breaking some of these support levels. This might just be the next opportunity in that pullback to find that entry into the trade. Take a look at stocks like uh, Schlumberger. Schlumberger on, on the refining side looking very, very good for that next opportunity to the upside. Uh, possibly even Valero, which just stretched big time the last few days and trying to break out of these resistance levels here in the chart. Now we probably need a rest or pullback to prove we can hold them as support and then look for the next opportunity in that area of the market. How about a Wally World? Oh, Walmart moving up strongly here, and it's one of the few retailers doing very, very well. Now, one of the things that 
uh, is making that case true as Walmart has been really responsive to its customers on keeping those prices low in the grocery sector, which has um, um, attracted a lot of folks to Walmart because they're really stressed right now as the consumer trying to uh, keep up with this inflation. And so Walmart is producing very, very well here um, and looking good. I think I would wait for a rest or pullback at this point to find the next entry into that trade. Um, be a little bit careful in there, but Walmart's still looking very, very good. Take a look at uh, Federal Express. Now, Federal Express is starting to run into some trouble. And if we look here, we've broken down below our 50 day moving average. Any rally back in here that shows a failure along this downtrend sets up what we call a blue ice failure, one of my favorite shorting patterns. Now, unfortunately, if our shippers are doing bad, that could be a major problem for us and really showing us that weakness of the consumer. We're gonna need this to strengthen a lot before this turns around and becomes bullish again. And if I take a look at UPS, well, UPS is in that same basket, pushing on lower here, not looking good at all. And part of this is because of that new um, employment program that they did that raised, raised um, salaries so much, but still, um, feeling um, uh, kind of bearish here on that shipping side showing that weakness of the consumer. So with that everyone, hey I want to wish you all a fantastic day. I want to wish you great results in your trading. Plan for a lot more chop, a lot more just uh, circulating around volatility in the market as we wait for the CPI. CPI number could change everything so be prepared for that Wednesday morning. Um, everyone take care, be safe and we'll see you right back here bright and early Wednesday morning. Wishing you all the very very best.